Mr. Young and foreign. Get to the gun! Woo! Your podcast sucks! Yo, what's going on, everybody? How we doing? It's Mr. Young. And it's for in the building, guys. Apologies for coming a bit late. We are in the middle of a work training session. And how the hell are we able to watch wrestling at the same time? I bro? know, <laughs> bro. We are like super multitasking, freaking octopi today. Okay, and funnily enough, Foreign and I, we are both in the same course. I want to give a big shout out to everybody who's in chat, who's been patiently waiting. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you guys are already talking about uh, dynamite and all, all, all that other stuff. So that's what we aim to do. By the way, it's not just about us talking about wrestling we want you guys to jump in on the conversation as well so i'm gonna very quickly say hello to muhammad daniel muhammad uh, gaddafi uh rishi what's up y'all tovakin uh via jk what's up oh my goodness uh jason we are lit today uh, edison what's up dude yeah, guys. Okay, I know it's always a post pay per view live stream that is when we are buzzing. Hell yeah! Uh, I love it when people just DM us on IG and say, "Hey, what's up with the finish?" Or I say, "Okay, come, let's go talk online. Let's go talk on the podcast." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, Edison brings up a very valid point right now. You know our kick to the gut video intro, right? Mm-hmm. Now has a WWE superstar inside. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't give you. Hey. Hey. Of course, who Edison is referring to is one Dante Chen, aka Trexus, aka Sean. I mean, um, let's you know what? Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into all our talking points today, okay? And when he debuted on NXT 2.0, and I have to say, the first e- uh, episode of NXT 2.0 was a bit of a like a, a shell shock, like a like what? Mm. It's it was so different. It was a lot of. <clears throat> squash matches it, it felt like an episode of superstars i actually really enjoyed the second episode it's almost as if they realized the issues in the first episode and they're like okay you know what we can't go full tilt with only throwing out the new guys mm-hmm. one thing i appreciated about the most recent episode of nxt right is they took the time to show us vignettes yes. introducing the superstars bro they told stories and that is when pro wrestling is at its mm-hmm. best, right? Um, yeah. And yes, that moment, I think for all of us growing up, not just in Singapore, but in Southeast Asia, because, you know, I think we all, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, folks in the chat, but we all had that moment growing up when we watched, I don't know who it is, The Rock, Stone Cold. For me, it was the Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, you know, from Hollywood, California, from Toronto, Canada. Never in my wildest dreams would I hear from Singapore. Are you, hey, bro, nice. I, st- I, I have goosebumps just saying that, you know. Bro, from Singapore, right, it's like parts unknown. No one know where it is. So I'm so happy that hey. finally someone recognizes Singapore on bro, the map. Parts Unknown got a, a, a mention on WWE TV before Singapore, okay? Parts Unknown, um, Death Valley, all those weird places. But finally, we have been acknowledged. Acknowledge us. Thank you, Dante Chen. You are living each and every one of our dreams. Much respect to him. And I know he listens to the podcast. I, he listens to it weekly. He's always looking at our IG stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to also pay tribute to the Instagram post that you made, uh, Mr. Young, mm-hmm. about how, like... Um, I think I think it was just a run through slideshow of all the different different interviews that we did with him. About three about three interviews that we did with Dante Chen, aka Traxus, <laughs> aka Sean Tan, and it's such a great feeling to discover or to see someone mm. at the start of their journey and to see where they have progressed. Whether like we where, like I've mentioned before, whether we follow a, a music artist, a football yeah, team, yeah. Uh, whatever it is, like to see them when it's like oh this is like our own little secret. And yep. then now it's for everyone in the world to know. It's really, really good. Yeah. And, let, and let's be proud. Let's not be those idiot. You know how some people, right? They like a band because they are so unknown. But when they make it bit, oh, they sold out. Let's not be those. Let's be supportive mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. The, the bands or the people, in fact, that we knew from the... Not not like I didn't know Dante or rather uh, Traxxas from the start, right? I only jumped into local mm-hmm. wrestling recently, so I can't even claim that. But you know how some people can be? Let's not do that. Let's be proud let's be so so damn proud like i can't even i can't help myself but be proud and 
we are so happy to be just a, a little part of that journey just to get pieces of that journey and to be able to put it out there as content so if you want to go back and listen to any of those podcasts you can uh check out old episodes in the archives of kick to the gut spotify and wherever else you get your great podcasts from mm-hmm. yeah and one thing i wanted to say about like the intro vignette because they only had a very a uh, quick one, like right before the commercial break. Mm. And they had like this shot of Marina Bay Sands. And then suddenly it got super imposed, blah, blah, blah. They all of a sudden got this like very mysterious yep, figure, yep. Dante Chen in his full costume. Mm. You know what? I love, I'm loving the presentation. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it has a bit of that red and gold outfit with that Mask Rider bandana look. Yeah. And then the music, the, mm. doesn't the music remind you of something like someone probably playing computer games on Razer or something? They'll probably listen to that kind of dubstep. Probably you know, like <laughs> mixer, step. visualizer music. A little bit. Uh, by the way, those watching the YouTube live stream, uh, don't mind me, I'm eating my lunch because like we mentioned, we're having a very busy day. So we literally just came from our course, right? And here I am freaking having lunch on stream. So uh, there might be a bit of ASMR chewing. No worries, bro. Bro, I'm having my uh, Flash Coffee. Have you heard of this brand? Very what? good brand, uh, bro. Just discovered. Flash Coffee? Oh my God, I'm talking yeah, in yeah. my mouth. My, go- my girlfriend oh. intro to me. Hmm. This, bro, is a Nutella shake with oat milk. What? Okay, Ooh. yeah, that sounds pretty uh, awesome. I'm going to buy in as well. Hey, okay, okay, but, but okay, like before yeah. all that, yeah, yeah, let's jump into the other topics as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. Before we leave this topic, though, of pride and everything like that, I have to say, I hope that there's more character development for Dante. I know this was his like big debut and you can see in his face too, he was so excited. I loved it. Just like you mm-hmm. can tell in the eyes, like, oh my God, he's living this dream right now. And I think each and every one of us felt it along with him, right? Um, yeah. I hope to see more character development because the guy he beat, uh, what was his name? Trey Baxter. Trey Baxter. Like he had some sort of a backstage thing. Um, yeah. With some tree story though. development. Yeah, not so much Dante. Like Dante had his moment. Ta-da! Coming up party. This is Dante. He's from Singapore. And then Beth said, We have big things for you outside. Yeah. <laughs> mm, but yeah. Well, one I, thing I must say, one thing I must say is he, our boy looks good on the TV tube, bro. I mean, like yeah. his physique really pops mm, out. Mm, mm. And I don't know, maybe it's because he's opposite Trey Baxter, who's kind of like a smaller guy, but he what? looks like a star already. And that's a great thing. First no, impression, I it, think it's good. Yeah, and I think it's quite obvious why they put him in there with Trey Baxter. It's like, okay, we need to portray him as like a star. Make him look good. And, you know, I mean, it was a short, quick match to show his dominance. <laughs> and yeah, mm-hmm. I, I can't wait to see where they go with that. Now, um, let's move on, okay? NXT 2.0, by the way, I really enjoy... Oh, talking about 2.0, there was a character named Gacy. I forget his first name, but people are having problems with that already. John Gacy. John Gacy. Is it because of his like right wing speech or some shit like that? His ah, promo? No, no, not even right wing. He was super left wing, if anything. He was super like, oh, this is a safe space. Basically poking fun at the PC culture. Con- uh, uh, Ultra liberal sort of, uh, ah. you know, woke. The mm-hmm. woke left. He's sort of mm-hmm. the woke left um, character. And people are like, yo, you can't do that. And also Gacy is the last name of a serial killer. A very famous. Oh, yeah serial killer yeah. in the US that John Wayne Gacy yeah. right so I think there's a combination of that that people are like e- no but you know what the thing is the second he started doing that character I was like oh I'm interested in this guy so he's pushing mm. buttons like what all characters should be right mm-hmm. so I'm like and and they are sort of leaning him towards heel so I think that's where people are irritated um, I'm I, I feel sad that I think the rumors are they're going to can the character or he might tone it down. I wish they wouldn't Aww. because to me, I was like, that's a very compelling character. I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting because I feel like this is where, there's a whole point of NXT in the first place. Mm. You should try stuff, doesn't yeah. work out, doesn't have the response, try again. And I think, uh, and I'm just being a devil advocate, right? The problem with the NXT, the third brand indie show NXT yeah. is that suddenly everyone has this expectation that every single wrestler has to be the finished product and have five star matches Mm. you know and i think that might be a bit unrealistic for these new developing talents and also you know what the problem is right because they are on tv there is a mass audience people who don't watch wwe not understanding that nxt is development for people to try things out they'll be like oh wwe is putting out this product and we don't like it and the woke left I mean, the people complaining are not wrestling fans. Let's face it. They are yeah. just, you know, offended, woke left folk. 
who yeah. like like i said like they don't get that oh they're just trying out new shit they're like no this is not what we want to hear you cannot say such thing safe spaces should be safe spaces damn it <laughs> you are triggering me and my micro transgressions and uh, yeah a- anyway <laughs> not, mr young not to say that yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> very entertaining, uh, very entertaining things. Uh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It's not to say that um, there's not a valid point, but you, you know how rabid the woke left can be. We've all heard of stories before. So I think NXT, they don't want to jump into that conversation and get, well, cancelled. Oh my God. Can you imagine if that is the whole gimmick? Joe Gacy gets cancelled. Hmm. That will be a bit cerebral, a bit next level in terms of a gimmick. I don't know whether WWE has the intelligence to pull that off. I don't know. Mm, the WWE PC is trying to be too PC, says Tovakin. Ah, mm, nice one. one. Oh, his stuff got removed from the YouTube ver- uh, version. Okay, la, so that, that means they, they're they like, nope, we are not jumping you into this pool of sharks. Yeah. Okay. Which is uh, sad. One thing, uh, sad, yeah, bro. One, one, oh. One thing I want to say is that like uh, there are some very compelling characters that is in the midst of being built yeah. up. Like mm-hmm. um, I am low-key enjoying Toxic Attraction, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why, bro? Like, I mean, they look great on screen, but they mm-hmm. are terrible on the mic. And Mandy, uh, but did, did you see, like, uh, the second she did her promo, I knew her promo would appear on Botch Club. Like, <laughs> she... Like, no, Mandy is a terrible promo. Just t- but, And then the other two also, like, don't know what the hell they're talking. They just look good. I like I like the, the like you said, like, concept of them as a three-man uh, women's tag team. Uh, the, the fact that they are a faction, okay, is good. I think it's something different in NXT, right? They, don't, they haven't had that yet. But that's exactly the point of what I like it. I like the fact that they are making Mandy Rose the person on the mic representing them. Because she's clearly the she, worst. Needs, she needs the help with the mic work, bro. She needs- clearly, they're, they're giving her the coaching to make her a mouthpiece, right? <laughs> oh, no, she's not. A, she cannot. Oh, my God. And also, this is not the first time they've done this, bro. There's been the four horsewomen. And mm-hmm. arguably way more talented, all four of them, right? And then remember, there was Paige, Mandy, and Sonia. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was mm-hmm. that group name? Uh, Absolution. Absolution. Right? Yeah, there you go. At least you got Paige on the mic there as the leader. And that makes sense. But as much as we love Mandy and she seems mm-hmm. to be improving in ring, on mic, cannot, cannot make it. <laughs> oh, I, I cringe so hard at this. This, this toxic attraction is toxic. Get this shit off my screen, you know. Cle- clearly, okay. What, what, what is your, like your favorite um rising star like like that that's making a good impression on you? Right, <laughs> Dante Chen, obviously. Um, hey, uh, hey, number four on trending on YouTube. Ooh, uh, the last what? time I checked. Hell yeah! Hey, you know what that means? There's a lot of Singapore support, as in Singapore wrestling fans. And okay, by the way, I'm sorry to bring this back up, but motherfuckers, stop doing this Kurt Day comparison, okay? Alama. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Like, no. Just no. Like, don't, don't, like, I know a lot of, like, casuals are making that comparison and, you know, yeah. right, dropping comments about, oh, Kurt Day, Kurt Day. It's like, no, dude. What, one, one guy is, like, he needs help and the other guy actually went and pursued his dream, dreams for real and put in the hard work, <laughs> okay? So that is a fucked up comparison. Don't do that. Oh, so uh, one R- guy, Rishi, Rishi, one guy in- Rishi says Sorry? Eva Marie is the biggest rising star right now, by the way. Uh, I, I should have completely ignored that comment. Sorry, Rishi. Uh, <laughs> Irvin says Braun Breaker, a.k.a. not Rex Steiner. Uh, that is one big problem. His name is the big problem that is stopping him from becoming a star. Bro, we all. got Braun Breaker, we got Von Wagner, we got... Like, what? Were they passing out names one day and they're like... I take this one first. Like, you know, like all the shit names, they were, I mean, Braun Breaker, Von Wagner. Like, what's going on here? I mean, Dante Chen sounds amazing in comparison. So I hope there's a reason why Braun Breaker is chosen. Yeah. But, oh man, it's um, Yeah, that's so that they can freaking uh, copyright that shit so that, you know, hmm. he can't use his real name, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh well, but uh, I like I said, Brown Breaker. I think uh, name aside, I think has the biggest potential for sure, and it's clear they're gonna push him. His freaking singlet look like the logo of NXT, bro. With all the colors. <laughs> yes, yeah. All the swirling colors. And so, you know, yeah. he's he's like you know up there with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, so they are trying to get him the rap, lah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just hope like the NXT stalwarts, the cornerstones like Champa, when Kyle O'Reilly when he returns, Pete Dunne, like I still hope they are major players mm. on the show. They are the ones that the casual audience need to know exist so that they can build up the new generation of stars. Yeah, true, true. Uh, Najwan, yeah. what's up, dude? Thanks for dropping by the chat. Appreciate hey, you. Um, okay, so let's move on from NXT because we have a lot more to talk about. Uh, before we get to Extreme Rules, how about this week's AEW offering? Oh my Ooh. God. Actually, uh, interesting because, okay, Grand Slam was done in a tennis stadium, thus the whole Grand Slam name, right? They Mm -hmm. take the whole full four hours and then they split it into Dynamite and Rampage. Like, would Mm -hmm. you call this a pay-per-view quality event? Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I felt like All Out was like, they just finished All Out, right? And then they kept the momentum going with this Otter S show. And I think that's great for this young company to have people keep talking about it, keeping the buzz open, you know? They are making WWE sweat because as good as Raw was and Raw has been... yeah, I don't want to say shit, but it has been sort of phoned in for the past couple of weeks. This week, mm-hmm. they did a pretty damn good Raw. You know, they realized that, all right, we need to, you know, pull out some surprises and stuff like that. But then yeah. Dynamite and then Rampage happened and completely, like, overshadowed it. Yeah, yeah. And and and, and I think that's the whole point of competition, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you need to always know that at the back of your mind, okay, if I don't perform well, someone else is going to take over my spot. Yeah, yeah. So every yeah. week, you have to, you know, bring it. But... The problem is, like, how many surprises can you have, you know? Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. we already blew the wad in terms of New Day versus the uh, the, the Bloodline. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but but I, I believe that um, as long as you keep the momentum going and as long as you keep telling great brand storytelling mm. that is on brand with the product, <laughs> um, you will all, and, and you need to listen and, you know, give the fans a reason to care. And yes. like, okay, if you want to put your fans on a journey and tease them, right, mm-hmm. there better be a freaking payoff at the end of it. Or else you feel like this is just a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, on Raw, uh, Muhammad Gaddafi brings up that they even use the head of the table twice. As in, they are really banking on Roman Reigns. Which actually kind of makes um, uh, Bobby Lashley a bit of a, you know, like... Mm, and and it's, Yeah, you know, like... Not a draw. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> You know, also tricks the how you do in welcome, welcome. Yes, we talked about Dante Chen's uh, debut already with much love and uh, admiration uh-huh. and excitement. So, okay, uh, let's very quickly then just run down Dynamite. To what stood out? I mean, freaking hell! They opened the show with Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson. Are you kidding me? Well, do you think that was the right move? And then putting the girls on the main event, or should you have been switched Ooh. the other the other way around? I liked it only because like. You, you want to get the really, really exciting good stuff out first so that, you know, after that, it's like, oh, okay, la. You, you catch my attention right away, right at the top of the show, you know? Yeah. So I didn't I mind it. To, and, I was trying and, to understand the logic, mm, though. Oh, I the, think yeah. because of the finish. You don't want to ha- go off air with a half past like, bullshit, quote-unquote, bullshit, non-conclusive finish. So it made sense mm. for it to be the first match to sort of just, okay, set the tone, like... Why, you think the Raw main event was a big deal? Here, let me give you a match that has never happened before. Mm-hmm. I have a couple of theories which I think you, I think you can co- confirm with me whether this is the thinking behind it. Mm. Okay, 30 minutes, right? Yep. They want to be able to give it as long as they can yep. with, with, just, with minimal interruptions and they don't have to like worry about, okay, whether are, are we going to go off air uh, yeah, finishing the match? Yeah, That's yep. probably one. Um, and you see, you're right. Because you're going to have a 30-minute Broadway. So, there are fans that's going to be like unhappy. Alama, I, I wanted a clean finish, right? Yep. So, they can have the fan get disappointed and then send the hope, send the fans home happy with the main event. Yes, that's right. And yeah. it made sense. I didn't think about the time limit draw for a while. And remember, like, at the start of AEW's existence, there were so many fucking time limit draws. Like, it almost mm. happened way too much. Like, everybody mm. was putting on 30-minute clinics to a point where it just got a bit like, oh, okay, yeah, we've seen this finish. And then they stopped yeah. doing it. 
and it's been mm. a while. And when you finally pull it out again, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot that shit exists. This yeah. see, this is a good use of a stipulation. If you use a stip, you overuse a stipulation, it gets like, oh okay, yeah, fine, we get it. But now you bring it back, time limit draw. Oh shit, thirty minutes. What are they going to do next? Yeah, it, it makes so much sense because mm-hmm. you can't have Danielson lose on his first match in AEW. Yeah, and you can't like it's a non-title match, right? So yeah. if Kenny Omega was to win clean, Oof. he doesn't gain anything out of it, and he completely destroys Danielson's uh momentum. Yeah, but if Danielson wins, then people will say, "Oh, new WWE guy have to shit on the champion." Yeah, you know, so like no one's gonna be no one's gonna win happy, but. What this does with this time limit draw is that now there's going to be anticipation. Now there's going to be like a rematch for the title. Yeah. So and, there's, there's a lot of ways to uh, extend the storytelling. Yeah, and you know, like the, the whole story of Kenny not wanting a rematch, that's the one being told, right? But they're probably going to get a rematch. So, I mean, this could go so many ways as well with this time limit draw. They could do a normal match, Iron Man mm-hmm. match, freaking just throw all the stipulations and build it properly this time as opposed to start by actually knowing that uh, AEW they might just start with the exploding ring match anyway uh. <laughs> did, did, did you feel that Kenny Omega's performance in this match brought out the New Japan mm. level of Kenny Omega back with Brian Danielson I think they bring out the best in each other yeah yeah you're right you're right yeah um, see, Gaddafi says it was noted by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that AEW officials put the match on first at 8pm local time so they could go longer without having to air a commercial break. Mm, yeah, huh? yeah that, that exactly explains it and mm-hmm. uh, our hunch was right. Mm. And also, right, I believe, remember we were talking in the uh, earlier part of AEW's uh, existence, how yeah. Kenny Omega is like not impressing us, uh, you know, mm. like all his New Japan stuff feels like this one level and when he was in AEW, like he doesn't feel as impressive. Yep. I think, right, Kenny Omega is a big match player in the sense that mm. he his best is brought out when he's paired against like equally great competitors. Well, remember also at the start, they were talking about how they wanted to take a backseat to let other talents shine. But then, mm-hmm. and as admirable a uh, stance that might have been, they didn't realize that this other talent they had was just indie guys that nobody knew. <laughs> so you have to yeah. put this. That's why now it's working because you have so many established guys there who know how to work, who have been to the big dance, the big show, mm-hmm. not Paul White, who have been... <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying, right? Who have been yeah. to the WWE, the promised land, and sort of know how to work their sort of program. Then now you give the rub to the, you know, AEW OGs, right? Yeah, and, clearly, clearly. And, and I think it's great because right now when they are the OGs, right, mm. they are the heels as well. Yeah. So it almost feels like it's not as if like they are pushing themselves for the fact of it, but it's there is gonna be this establishment yeah. and this new generation of people that is challenging for the titles yeah. will eventually throw them off. Also, did you see uh, Brian Danielson and Adam Cole actually they both praised the WWE? Mm, you know, and yeah, thank yeah, them yeah, for the opportunities and stuff like that. And like, I mean, you compare people like that to someone like, I hate to bring this up again, but someone like John Moxley, like Dean Ambrose, who just shat on the company uh, that mm-hmm. he left. So, you know, like they made it there. Why? It's because they have the talent. They are great. I'm not saying that John Moxley is not great. I'm just saying that maybe that wasn't his goal, you know, and now he's what? having the f- time of his life having shitty, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, having... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. He's having shitty New Japan matches because that main event of Rampage was fucking garbage. And every mm-hmm. time he's been in there with uh, Suzuki, it's looked fake as fuck. Like, I don't know if you I saw know. the headbutt. Bro, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's not just the headbutts. It's the Everything freaking bro- like... It's the punches, it's the slaps. And like, all that kind of- <laughs> it looks so fake. Like, I mean... To the North American audience, they heard, mm-hmm. they've heard of Japanese strong style, strong style. Everything's supposed to look painful and hurt more, right? And then mm-hmm. they pull this shit off on like AEW and it looks like the fakest faking fake fuck, fake shit fuck. Like, you, you, you don't like when they, when they always do what? The chops, is it? The chops, the, the forearm to the clavicle bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah the forearm to no, the clavicle, but yeah, yeah. The worst was Moxley's, like they try to hit by each other and you know that they're pulling back. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying they should really fucking bang heads, but do something else that doesn't look so fit. 
I hit by you, mm-hmm. you hit by me, we hit by each other. Look like they're trying to bow to each other for fuck's sake. And then it, it looks like they're holding back to it. It's just look, it just looks fake. At the end of the day, it you looks know, when fake. You, when you say all this, right, mm. I appreciate Brian Danielson even more. Mm. I feel Brian Danielson is the best example of he lays his shit in like really, really snug. You can tell he's like, holy crap, he's really punching and like kicking Kenny Omega. Yeah. But I feel it's very safe as well. And I think he really is the a, yep. a, an elite wrestler. <laughs> all elite. This goes mm-hmm. back to this conversation we've had so many times before. Like, there are so few performers now in this generation that are snug and safe. Like, your Bret Hart's. When Bret Hart threw a punch, it looked painful. But he was probably one of the safest workers out there. You know, uh, Kurt Angle, yeah. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, that sort of that crop, they made it believable. They made it believable with intensity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who do you who do you think of at this current era that kind of has that spirit in terms mm. of a wrestler? Wow. It's... I mean, I, I I mentioned Brian Danielson. I really think that he he does have that or mm. he does encapsulate that kind of yeah. style. Yeah. Um, oh, it's but... hard to point out, yeah, because I guess because maybe everyone just wants to work a little bit safer. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think you got to look at people like in NXT the. Timothy Thatcher's. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. But um, in AEW, I I kind of really, really enjoy uh, Miro now. Definitely. <laughs> yes. M- M- Miro just doesn't give a damn. Uh, in terms of the other wrestlers, okay, let, let's talk about the rest of the uh, Ram- uh, Dynamite uh, card. card. Sure. Um, we got MGF beating Brian Pillman. You know, no surprise yeah, it there. Was, it was, it yeah. was okay. It was okay, but it built up Brian Pillman and I think yes. that's the whole intention of it. That was, oh, yeah, that was the point. Uh, Malachi Black defeated Cody Rhodes. Who, uh, let's talk about this match. Who is getting booed? <laughs> People are finally, well, showing... Coming around. Yeah, showing that, yeah, we don't really feel your bullshit. You're holier than thou bullshit. Do, do, you, uh, do you watch this Amazon Prime series called The Boys? No. You heard of them? Oh, The Boys, okay, yeah, so- no, no, yeah. Okay, but you you know you know of his existence, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of people saying that uh, Cody Rhodes' uh, attire mm. and his whole attitude right now reminds uh, uh, reminds them of like the main villain in the boys called Homelander. Okay, okay. His outfit is like so. Homelander is essentially an evil Superman character, lah, mm. who is like, oh, I want to do good, I want to do justice, but I'm gonna kill and laser eye people to death <laughs> to get it. So and even with the cape and like the overbearing like all American uh, color scheme. Yep. That is really very homelander. And I think Cody Rhodes, like double downing on this type of like, oh yeah, I'm trying to do the best. I'm trying to take care of my people. Kind of shit. That makes him such a great heel. He yes. just totally go down this road. He, because he's like, he's this delusional guy who thinks he's helping everybody. Actually, he's uh, the biggest prick out there. Like, yeah, and I totally get it. But the question is, does he realize that this is where he is? I think at this point he should, but... You know, for yeah. many, many months, I don't think he was there. I think people he people still were cheering him and they were like, oh, people buy this Kool-Aid. So I'm, I'm glad that the New York, uh, was it New York? Yeah, it was the New yeah. York crowd. Yeah. I'm glad that the New York crowd booed him because it's like a wake up call. People actually think Malachi Black is cool. Yeah, and, and I think, I don't know whether he was calling it on the fly, but there was this one part, the distraction by the referee where he kind of pushed the referee aside and mm. that led to him losing the match. Uh, or maybe he's already aware and yeah. I think this is like, okay, Malachi Black can now move on from this rivalry, thank God, please. <laughs> and then essentially turn uh, Cody Shield in the process. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. And also, did you see poor Arn Anderson try to... Uh... <laughs> Get he around the ring down. post. He fell off. Wow, poor things. Yeah, I, I think, think that one was a botcher mania. <laughs> oh, that was. And here's the thing: that was supposed to be the setup for the finish. He was supposed to have yeah. been involved. That's why he had to get back up, get back on the apron, and they had to buy a bit of time, waste a bit of time. So it's like, ooh, okay, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe Cody Rose will turn on Ahn at some point because you know Ahn is like that poor uncle who. It's what better there. way to turn shield than to beat up on Anderson? Bro. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, I don't know how many people have already done that, but at least we won't see Malachi <laughs> Black versus Dustin Rhodes anymore. Jeez, what the Thank hell? Thank God. Thank been, God. Uh, I yeah. think those two were just, they had no chemistry with each other. Let me chalk speaking it up to of, that. Speaking of no chemistry, bro, no, uh. who, no one gave a shit that Brandy returned. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she came back and I was like, uh, okay. 
the the, the first yeah. uh, ever interracial couple a couple in the universe is it you know that they're gonna debut their reality show next week right which is quite funny it's like shouldn't yeah i know then what is he gonna heal it up be like the miss uh, I hope so. I hope he's going to showcase his delusional side on the talk show or on the reality show. No. Play it up the character. La. That's the thing. It's already filmed. So it's going to be his pre, quote unquote, heel turn uh, character. Mm. Yeah. Oh, apparently <laughs> Cody versus Malachi Black is still on. There's a tag team match. Oh, boy. Alama. Okay, maybe that's where he turns on Anla. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. There you go. I uh, mean, but it's still, it's just us nitpicking. It's still, uh, you know. Uh, just to see Malachi Black go over and go over decently strong, I enjoy it. I'm I'm so happy for Malachi Black because I think he is reaching his potential in AEW, bro. Mm, mm. Like like everything about him, like I am so in love with his entrance, yep. the way he presents himself, um, and just just the ability for him to tell his stories in his own way. Yep, yep, um, yep. yeah. I definitely will find his audience over there, lah. And that that's you know the best thing that could happen to him actually having been fired from the WWE, now he actually gets to express his creativity in a place that can, will allow it. Can I give you a very random trivia that sure. I found out about his, about his entrance theme song, right? Mm. So uh, you, you hear like this, like screaming and howling like some person that is in hell. Yeah. The the theme song is actually by a Dutch heavy metal band and the lyrics that they were screaming is mm. actually in Dutch. Okay. That's why I couldn't make out like what <laughs> the hell they screamed because it's not in English. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's pretty dope. Um, like like they, he's using a lot of his nationality, but in a way that's very subtle. Okay, okay. Uh, Gaddafi uh, corrected himself. Says it's Dante and Seidel versus Cody and John. So wow, such a nobody cares match. Okay, very good. Uh, not not Dante Chen, uh, Dante Martin, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, sure. Uh, Sting and Darby <laughs> Allen defeated FTR. There you go. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so well, who uh, I I want to ask a question. Who did FTR piss off in AEW? Because it young, seems like young box lah, clearly. Yeah, <laughs> like they came in with this whole like, oh my god, FTR versus Young Bucks, old school versus new school. This is going to be the feud of the century in terms of the tag team division. They had one match. Uh, FTR mm-hmm. sucked, and I don't think they've won anything of note ever since. Well. What what is they gonna do? Because if the revival left WWE to have their freedom in AEW and yep. they are not getting their ability to to be themselves in AEW, where else are they gonna go? NWA? <laughs> Actually, why not? They might go there and run rough shot because you know mm. it's that kind of a thing. But yeah, like here, obviously you you're putting Darby Allen and Sting over, and they are probably doing out of respect to Sting. So yeah, let's let me put Sting over. But at their expense, like Sting put. Uh, I can't remember who in the Scorpion Death Lock got the tap out. Um, I think one of the announcers forgot what the name was. The, the, I, I think, was it JR or is it um, Shivani? He just Escalibur. said... Uh, no, not Excalibur. Excalibur knows every move. <laughs> he, he was like... Uh, I, did, I, did, I don't remember that part, but... Um, he's like, the it's, the scorpion, it's the Scorpion. It's the Scorpion. The Scorpion. <laughs> what, what, what's funny was like, the they kept Sting looking good. Yeah, like, I I know I know Sting is like really keeping up his end of the bargain and actually performing in matches. He's not botching it up like a Undertaker or what. Mm. But again, he's like sixty plus. Like mm. he shouldn't be in the ring. Why? But okay. Clearly, he wants to be in the ring. My question is why we're we not saving it for big events. I I guess okay. Would you consider this a big event then? I would. I would. Grand uh, Slam is a big event. Okay. Sure. And they 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 talk about how they want to make it a yearly thing now that they they are the because of the success of the event. Oh right. So. Sure. Maybe, maybe, huh. yeah, maybe it's something that they want to continue going forward. Uh, Irvin says, still no respect for the gun club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Guys, guys, the undefeated gun club. Don't oh, forget, yeah, huh? exactly. Uh, bullshit wins matter my ass. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the main event of Dynamite. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. DMD. Arguably mm-hmm. the hottest female uh, in, in terms of like actual momentum and heat right now versus Ruby Soho. Uh, this was a rough match. I don't know. They're, like they work together. They have a history, right? Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. I thought this match um, was balls. Like it was. It, it felt. It, it felt a little bit like Dustin versus Malakai. There was like very little chemistry. Is it like okay, I? Mm-hmm. I wasn't that 
much against the match. Like, I, I did enjoy it for what it was. I think I think I enjoyed the story and the two characters because mm-hmm. Ruby Soho, Ruby Soho, I think is a very re-energized person yep. right now yep. being in AEW. And I've never had felt more crowd investment in her ever, at all. Like, like definitely better, way better in, in WWE. So like the crowd is really behind Ruby Soho, right? Uh, and I think... Uh, Britt Baker just really establishing herself as like one of the best female mm. uh, talents in the world not just in AEW I really think that you can compare her with anyone in WWE mm. her character wise you know her ability to to do it, be in the ring but yet to remember right uh, they were trying to tell the story of how Ruby Soho was actually mentoring Britt Baker or like had her, one of the first matches in, in, in the match so I do not know whether the issue was both of them were trying to be a ring general and mm. trying to lead the match Correct. that could be it yeah, because I felt like there are some, there was some communication issues, mm. but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the match, lah. Really? Okay. I, I mean, I, I didn't think it was a bad match. I just didn't think it was a great match. It was just a match, especially when you started off the night with Kenny Omega versus Daniel Bryan. Everything mm-hmm. else is going to pale in comparison, you know. Of course, bro. Of course, like you had the match of the year, right? You can't, can't compare, right. but uh. I really appreciate uh, AEW in trying to make the women's title a world title. Mm. At least they give that sense of credibility. Even though, yes, the division is not there yet, but if they make it something that people aspire to be as like a prestigious title, yeah. it's perception. Right? Perception is what makes reality. True. So they call it a world championship. So right, that's right. great. Uh. Okay, uh, we need to skip past the rest because we need to get back to our course very soon. So we haven't even <laughs> touched on extreme rules yet, but CM Punk, first TV match in a long time, beat Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, honestly, I, it was an all right match. Like, mm-hmm. you know, nothing to shout ho- like uh, shout about. It was that just was great to see him. Botch. Yeah. The Huracan yeah, Rana I... that Hobbs basically landed on his head. Yeah. So I hope I he's think okay. Luckily, he's like a bitch sized guy. Like. Probably if he's skinnier, his head will probably crack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah the Super yeah. Click versus Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. Um, yeah, it was cool to see Adam Cole in there and arguably the best worker in this whole match as well. Yeah, it was really, really fun. And I think a lot of um, what I got out of that match was that they, are, they, they seem to be pivoting towards Adam Cole and Jungle Boy a lot. Yeah, which so, is great, actually. Jungle Boy actually looks bigger than Adam Cole. Now I understand why they wanted him to be a manager in uh, the main <laughs> roster of WWE. Uh, but okay, let's move on. Man of the Year versus the Inner Circle. The Man of the Year actually got the win. Um, yeah. Dan Lambert with his MMA folk going in there beating the shit out of Chris Jericho. What do you think? <laughs> okay, what's funny is I got a lot of MMA friends, uh, fans who are mm. my friends, who come up to me and I was like, what the fuck is Jorge Masvidal going, giving that fake ass knee, knee to, to, to Chris Jericho? Okay. I, but I then, thought they, first of all, looked like they were having fun and uh, Paige yeah. Van Zandt looked hot as F, badass as F. Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't she give like some... Uh, Body blow. combinations to Chris yeah, Jericho. Yeah. she's doing bare knuckle box uh, fighting. Mm, okay, okay, yeah. But but one thing I was interested in was looking at the at Twitter right after the fact. Mm. Do, do you see that Jorge Masvidal? Uh, I think he retweeted the 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 video. Yeah. And then uh, Ben Eskren replied to that tweet because oh, Ben no. Eskren was the one that kind of knocked out by the initial uh, mm, the knee. knee right. Mm, mm. And then he said like, "Somebody pay me royalties, bitches." Oh my god. Stop it, like you got knocked uh, out. Don't talk so much, okay? Uh, Dr. Doom, yeah. welcome to the chat. How are you doing, man? We're just going through um, AEW stuff from this week. And we will get to yeah. extreme rules, okay? Uh, Irvin yeah. says he thinks that WWE does celeb stuff way better. I actually agree with that 100%. I think mm. right now, AEW is sort of... Like, if WWE is way too scripted, well, there's a point to that. They do it to make everybody look good, right? In yeah. this case, I feel like they're just uh, AW. Just okay, lah. Whatever you want to do, lah. Just you know, go and have fun. So that could be a problem for perf- non-performance. Non- yes, like, but like yeah, this whole people. Dan Lambert stuff has been like one of my favorite like things, lah. You know, yeah. he's freaking yeah. annoying. I love it. Uh, Lucha Bros and Santana and Ortiz versus Hardy Family Office. Uh, let's move on. Because it was a typical look to bros match. It was just too much flippity yeah. floppy. Uh, but they, they were doing well uh, in New York. Yeah. Like, I think they had a yeah. lot of crowd support. Penelope Ford defeated Anna J. Okay, great. Uh, and then the main event. <laughs> uh, pff, oh, I already talked about how I can't stand this whole John Moxley. Eddie. Okay, the best part of this was Eddie Kingston trying to rip off his singlet and then looking like uh, fucking Andre the Giant. 
he because he couldn't rip <laughs> off his single. He was like, get this. Like Eddie Kingston should just be on the mic all the time with John Moxley. Yeah, because she was entertaining. Like. Yeah, John Moxley is like the like the slightly quieter introvert, like lunatic. Mm-hmm. Eddie is the mm-hmm. big mouth. <laughs> John Moxley has to be like, okay, 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 calm down. Once in a while. Yeah. You know? I love I love they, that dynamic. They look good, especially every time they enter. Like when they yeah. enter the arena, yeah. I feel like hyped up. Yeah. And okay, th- but but yeah. And then this match had to happen. So anyway. It was it was but, the shit. Can, can I can I say one thing that I like about the match? I know it was the lights out and yeah, all yeah. the crazy, crazy shit, right? But the thing that I enjoyed the most about the match was when Eddie Kingston was trying to like chop 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 lens archer right and then it got no effect right yeah that time he did the eye poke yeah yeah <laughs> I yeah. thought that was such a great great move lah yeah uh, is Kingston better as a heel oh Kingston is 100% better as a heel unfortunately he's a funny heel so he might become a face so I don't think you could apply to the whole heel face dynamic he's just a character which mm-hmm. shows you actually how good he is as a character it's just the, I don't think these matches are helping them but then again I think they've realised that I don't know if you realize this also, Rampage usually puts the real main event at the start. The last match is sort of like a semi, like, eh, whatever match. Is it? Yeah. Um, their, their main event is not the last match of the night. They, they, they seem to believe that because if you think about it from a wrestling fan's point of view as well, you've watched SmackDown for two hours, the likelihood of you staying for like all the way until the end of a two-hour Rampage is actually very low. Yeah, you'd yeah. be burnt out by then. So this actually makes a lot of sense. And especially if the the starting time of Rampage is quite late in the day, right? It's like 10 p.m. It's after SmackDown. It's, yeah, so my well start with the best thing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and um, if you watch Rampage, you realize they always start with their quote-unquote main event or their hottest draw. So, okay, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. time to jump into WWE Extreme Rules, which we have just come off of. I hope you guys uh, watched it as well. And if you didn't, you know what? I think it's worth going back to watch just for the matches. Storyline-wise, maybe a bit... uh, But let's jump into it. Okay, Liv Morgan beats Carmella. Nobody cares. On the pre-show, too. Move on. Yes, On the pre-show, poor thing. uh. New Day uh, versus Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omas. I mean, we have five veterans and one green giant. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if with the ending... Okay, Big E gets the win after the miscommunication between Lashley and Styles, right? Are we working towards Lashley versus Styles? Uh, well, I don't know whether it's, that's going to happen directly after this because they announced, right, mm. Raw tomorrow is going to be Lashley and Big E being uh, challenging for the title. Uh, and that's going to start off Raw. Mm. So I like that they got that out of the way and announced it beforehand. Do you realize what they're doing? They are playing this AEW game almost. They're like, okay, mm-hmm. Lord, you want to put on your hottest match first? We also do it. You know, it's to get yeah, people yeah. interested in Hook right off the bat. And it's great to see WWE responding in a, yeah, we can put on, because we always, we've always we always known that they can do this. You know, one thing that is funny about the commentary though, mm. because at the end of the match, obviously New Day won, right? And mm. then they talk about, they were they were hyping up the draft next week. Yeah. Or starting this Friday. Friday. They were saying that, uh, could this be the last time we see the New Day together? They're like, they didn't already, this just happen last year? Yeah, they already broke didn't up. They just... They broke up and then now the Big E, the WWE Champion, they're back on the same show. Yeah. So are they going to separate them again? So I, th- I thought that was very funny because they're completely no selling the fact that they really did this whole angle last week. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, Big uh, Bobby Lashley said chicken shit. Ooh. 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 Okay, like AEW is overdoing it with the shit, 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 dip shit, carny piece of shit, you chicken shit. And then now WWE is okay, I find you going to do one. One shit can already. So that our our PG audience doesn't get too offended. Uh, I, I think that's quite uh, sad. But anyway, Street yeah. Profits versus the Usos. I mean, look, we've seen the Usos work very well with athletic teams like the New Day before. So mm-hmm. it's no surprise that these two teams did well. It yeah, it was a, a great match. Yeah, they it worked really a great. very good match. The Usos retain. Um, I kind of wanted the Street Profits to get some momentum because they've sort of been hitting a wall, right? And and the crowd that was really oh, behind them though. Yeah. And there sure. were a lot of false finishes, mm-hmm. which is actually great because like, I was just thinking about it, right? They don't really have like a, I know they have their finishing moves, but it's not like a very standout finish. It's a splash. So yeah, yeah. to me, it almost makes it like, oh, okay, like actually a super kick could end this. Uh, a splash could win this. You know, it could come out of nowhere. As opposed mm-hmm. to like, if you watch like a Stone Cold match, you know, oh, stunner means game over already. 
Yeah, and and of course Montez Ford just Montez Ford just came off a really great performance against Roman Reigns on SmackDown, mm. and I think they they really did a good job playing up to the fact that he had injured ribs. Um, and there was yep. storytelling in the match, so mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte Flair. Oh, it was a hard fought match, you know, and yeah, we we can't fault them in terms of like putting on the, a match, but the storyline, okay. So Charlotte killed Lily. Yep. Which that's, is that's the story that was being told. <laughs> like, yes. Oh so does Alexa Bliss go even more crazy now and do weirder shit? Fiend okay. shit. One thing that I realized is that WWE really loves to shit on their hometown heroes, huh? Oh yeah. This yeah. was Alexa Bliss hometown. Yeah. And she did a great performance. And I love the fact that they kept the supernatural stuff at the minimum mm-hmm. and let her wrestle. Yes. Which I really and I really enjoyed that part. Uh but uh seeing Alexa Bliss crying and having snot come out of her nose, I feel sad. <laughs> did you notice her mouth? She had a pill in her mouth. Yeah, I... why uh? why they want to show her coming out like vomiting at like it? No, 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 because at the end of the mouth they wanted uh, at the end of the match, they wanted her frothing at the mouth. So she probably popped some sort of effervescent pill. That will make uh, her like froth, right? But then I was like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I can see the thing. It's like, you know, you put the tablet, the, what is that? The, not, um, not, you know, um, you know, one what of those uh, tablets that like, you put in your Yeah, like, drink. it's on the tongue, like, it stays on the tongue. Like, you can see the pill there. I'm like, wow, wow. at least like, freaking close your mouth or something. Like. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I felt bad. And I think if, if, <laughs> if Alexa Bliss can generate sympathy out of us for the death of a doll, right? I mean, yeah, you gotta yeah, give her yeah. some... That is, right? I'm not the only one who spotted the pill. It was so obvious on TV. It didn't work. So she had to... Uh, redoxin. Yes, redoxin. You put in the water Oof. and then it... So she had to put some <laughs> pill to make it froth. La. So she had to use her own saliva. Ooh. Anyway. Ken, ken la, ken la. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about Jeff Hardy versus Shamus. Versus... I, I'd rather talk about Alexa Bliss and her saliva, but sure. Yeah, oh, God. Bro. Uh, versus Damien Priest for the US title. Mm-hmm. Priest got the roll up win, right? And I have to say, yep. Sheamus, like he reminded me of why he was an ex champion and how good he was. Like with his Sheamus was the one that held the match together, bro. He, he carried the match. Like, mm-hmm. I, does it feel to you like he has a renewed sense of uh, purpose? Yeah, yeah, I did. I think you know why. Mm. He just got married. Uh. Ah, happy only. Ah, uh. is happy. Yeah, uh. <laughs> every morning, every night, happy. No, bro. When you get married, that stuff stops. Anyway. Oh, uh, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Alexa Bliss and her saliva, though. Okay, oh, anyway. God. So, yeah. Nothing else to say other than this was a good match. I mean, where do we go from here? Jeff I Hardy, mean, is he one and done? Like, uh, the, oh, Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is tough. Lah. Mm. It's like, you know, when you're a long-time fan of someone and then you realize like, yeah, it's, he's not that special anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, that, that connection is lost. I mean, you'll always be a fan, but you accept that, okay, <sighs> maybe he's not as, you know, big as he was, so you have to accept lah. Well, here's the thing about Jeff Hardy, and, you know, we always talk about his creativity and stuff like that, but he hasn't mm-hmm. been, like, he's, there's creativity and then there's marketable creativity, you know what I mean? Like, he is that guy yeah. who, like, he's, like, talking about, oh, bringing back the Willow character, I'm like, that, that's my that's, the, that's my reaction like okay well, the Willow character wasn't even that special you know I like you talk about a Chris Jericho that constantly reinvents right yet and, and makes it work but then there's Jeff Hardy who is reinventing but most of the time his characters are like they don't hit the problem with Jeff Hardy is right I, I think it's not just completely his fault mm. I think that WWE consider him like spoil goods already or like yeah. maybe they, they don't consider it reliable or whatever it is but they generally move on from him yeah you, it's clear there's no it's creative quite, yeah. behind him maybe he so needs to be all elite uh, or maybe he just needs to go to TNA la. oh god okay uh, so who's how are you doing so who says Hello. I heard Bliss's Sliver and that's why you're here okay well Alright, my man, my man. <laughs> uh, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. You know what, man? I really love Becky Lynch as this cocky but comedic heel. Did you notice Oof. like her facial reactions? Yeah. And then there was that moment where she was like... <laughs> yeah, the one where Sasha Banks returned, right? Yeah, no, and um, um, 
It's that meme. Even uh, WWE on Fox, they posted it. It was the exact same expression. You, you know the Sylvester Stallone meme? Is it? Okay, yeah. I'm not too sure about that, but it's funny. It was funny to me. And I think what made it so interesting was that he, her staying as a heel mm-hmm. and then having Sasha Banks as a heel return, yeah. beating up Bianca Belair and then beating up Ben Kilish. So I think it makes the dynamic all the more interesting. It's yeah. not so cut straightforward, yeah. right? So yeah, this is the only way this could have progressed in my view to have throw a third person in there. So this is now a three-way feud, right? So the match is thrown out. It's a DQ. Uh, they were having a good match you know, before that. I didn't Bianca mind... Bianca Bele felt like she was going to win. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mind this, like, sort of bullshit ending because I know that this just means there's more to come, especially with these three. And yes, mm-hmm. uh, Irvin, Sasha Banks looked super hot. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm, Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss. It was a good day for wrestling fans. <laughs> uh, and then there's the main event. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is this pay-per-view called again? Foreign? Extreme rules. How many extreme rules matches were there? Just this one. For fuck's sake, man. Just call this like fucking unforgiven or some shit like that. Extreme rules that only one match feature any weapons. Like, I mean, that that's dumb. Okay, can we just be fair to all our uh, wrestling fans, not just the male fans, the female fans as well? Yes, Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks was looking very attractive. But can we appreciate, if nothing else, the main event featured two very good-looking men? Yes, yes, very uh, thirst-inducing indeed. Especially a certain, if you like demons and abs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, yeah, my my big thing is that there was only one Extreme Rules match in an Extreme Rules pay-per-view, and it wasn't even that extreme. Okay. And it was added at the last minute, the action rule stipulation. So probably yeah. some people, they, they all forgot about it. Like, like, you know, let's just put one. Like, yeah, what, what is going on? At least make New Day versus Bobby put in like fucking chair match or uh, tables match or some shit lah. Like, Even an extreme swarm fight or like a eye versus eye match is still something. Okay, okay. Huh? Maybe not eye, uh, the less we have. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe a, a doll got murdered. Maybe that was extreme. Anyway. Uh, uh, <sighs> Look, can, man, can we can we talk about the ending first? Yeah, that's the most important. Thing. The match itself, they made the demon look strong, which is good, right? Yeah, they we were speculating like, oh, how are they going to do this? Are they going to make the demon look like a bitch? They did not. They actually made him look very strong. He had to fight through not just Roman Reigns but the Usos as well. We got mm-hmm. tables, uh, kendo sticks. Did you notice Roman Reigns wearing a mask when they fall into the crowd? No, I didn't. What was that about? Okay. Like, okay, is it because he's afraid that you know, he might be immunocompromised because of his past leukemia diagnosis? That's the only but, reason I can think. Perhaps, be- but because I think there's a great... Yeah. I think there's a great heel move, though. Why? That he do doesn't that. want to be in the masses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I he, mean, they can play it off as that, if they right. want. No, but like it, it just very felt very weird. I, I missed the moment where he maybe put it on. But he spears Finn Balor through the barricade and then they start uh-huh. brawling. And then like I think I looked away and then I look back, all of a sudden, he has a mask on as they fight all the way to the uh, pre-show booth area. I'm like, what? When did he find a I, mask to put on? I I didn't realize that he was wearing a mask until like halfway through it. Yeah. I think I think I was just like watching it but not really focusing. But one thing that caught my attention was Okay, that made me laugh. La. Remember there was this one part where <laughs> Roman Reigns pulled out a candlestick, he wanted to beat up the Finn. And then the demon pulled out like a whole bunch, like, oh, you want yeah, one yeah. candlestick, I give you five candlesticks. Yeah, that one was funny, la. that one was very, very funny. That was um, comedic, yeah. Um, okay, so the demon is down, and then the red lights start pulsing. Mm-hmm. And then the demon also started pulsing. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Uh, does, this take, all... does this take away your uh, belief? I mean, not belief, but like, bro, does it make it a little uh, bit hokey? Bro, fuck, it's fucking hokey, bro. And, and then you know what's the, the worst part? The worst part was like, the, not only was he convulsing, he had his body to the ground. So it looked like he was humping the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, he finally re-emerges. The red lights have brought him back to life. And then he ascends mm-hmm. the, like he gets... Um, Roman Reigns down. He ascends the top rope. He's about to deliver the coup de grace. Mm-hmm. And then, and then. And then the top rope breaks and he falls, crotches himself. One, two, I mean, uh, Roman Reigns hits the spear. One, two, three. Um, Irvin says, and I think this is a great 
explanation as to what happened. The match was so extreme, God came in and broke the ropes. I do not know which one is the more confusing finish. This or when Stone Cold was trying to reach for the briefcase and the briefcase was unknowingly uh, brought up. Remember that oh, one pay-per-view? Okay, no, see, that one you can explain somebody's shenanigans. Uh, they are backstage pulling up the briefcase. That one you can explain storyline-wise. Mm-hmm. This one, I don't know why. You're going to show footage of Paul Heyman freaking like unwinding the top turnbuckle? Actually, if they did that on Raw, I'd be like, yes, well done. Because, you know, that <laughs> could be the- a... Yeah. That's the only way. Like they have to make it seem like the road break was on purpose caused by somebody. Yeah, was trying to protect Roman Reigns. It cannot be like oh accident or what. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Unless they're trying to paint this whole he got lucky and the demon should have won to keep the. But it's like it's yeah, it's a cheap, it's a cop out. It feels cheap, doesn't it? It's yeah, it's I, a cop out. I okay. would rather have an explanation. Like yeah, uh, you see Paul like fan footage. They could even go this whole like you know. Like fan footage shows Paul Heyman freaking uh, like unwinding the t- top turnbuckle. But the thing is, like, will the fans be patient enough to know what really happened? Are they willing to wait until SmackDown to find out? Because I tell you, this finish turned off a lot of fans. People were texting me and saying <sighs> that it's some hokey bullshit 1980s WWE well, finish. Well, I mean, there was this shit to start <laughs> with. And then <laughs> the rope breaking... Um, okay, what is worse? This ending or the 2019 Hell in a Cell between Seth Rollins and The Fiend? Oh. I Okay, Seth Rollins versus The Fiend Hell in a Cell because they DQ'd or they ended the match in a Hell in a Cell. You know, like that That made no sense. Whereas this, like you can argue, you, you can go many ways with this. Like I don't hate it. I think it's lazy storytelling if they go mm-hmm. ahead and say, oh, it was just an accident. Mm-hmm. You know, no, no, I hope they better not say that it's an accident because I think that will just turn people off even more. Mm. But you know, on the on the subject of that hell in a cell match, cheap plug for people to check out the broken skull sessions with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins actually talks to Stone Cold ah. about that particular match and how after the match he almost came to blows with Mr. McMahon. No shit, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah we gotta watch because, that. Okay. Quick one because uh Seth Rollins and the Fiend. Wait, wait, don't spoil it. I, don't spoil it. I no, wanna no, go no, watch I, it I, myself. I'm not I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm just saying that they had one way that they wanted to go with the match. Uh, so the match that happened wasn't what they wanted to do. Is just it? leave it at that. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Explains a lot, mm-hmm. actually. So there you go, that's extreme rules. You know what? From a wrestling standpoint, a pro wrestling standpoint, I would give it a solid seven and a half, eight out of ten. But from a sports entertainment of a storyline mm-hmm. um, perspective I would like minus the score a bit because a lot of it was like huh what okay the matches okay. the matches were really good like yeah. if you look at the matches itself like every single match caught my attention and got me invested even Charlotte Flair and yeah. Alexa Bliss the match was good so can we safely say that right now WWE's writing and booking is letting them down and not the talent because we know that the talent is is talented. They're good workers, right? They're all. You don't Hasn't get to you, you don't get problem? to raw and smack down without being good workers. Hasn't that been the problem all these years? Like, True. like True. WWE even like a few years ago had the most stacked tor- uh, talent roster in the world. Even I think now I still think their tolerance rest- the talent roster is slightly better than AEW, even with all their new signings. Yeah, sure. In terms of young potential and, and ability s- to draw star, yes, yeah, star power. Um, yeah, they, they, they do have that. It's just that, they, like you said, the booking, the writing. Yeah. So I guess we are just looking forward to the next thing, which is Crown Jewel, a.k.a. Saudi Mania, a.k.a. Money Money. So I saw somebody posted something. I don't know if it was you who reposted it, but like the amount of money they make just from Crown Jewel is like more mm-hmm. than WrestleMania and like a whole year's worth of pay-per-view. So it's like, okay, la, so- let them go for the payday. The five uh, Crown Jewels or Saudi events that mm. they have done, has generated generated more profit for them and revenue than all the WrestleMania's combined. Yeah, just think about that for a second. Enough, mm. enough for them to just freaking suck up all the Saudi money. Like, and on, that's like, why money. Brock Lesnar is coming back to fight Roman Reigns. Okay, fuck WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. He's coming in for the money, 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 money. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's Extreme Rules. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Oh, before we wrap things up and we apologize for it being a shorter episode because, well, like we said, like we have a course to go back to, right? Actual adulting mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
if you guys haven't watched the Dark Side of the Ring Chris Canyon episode, I strongly yes. suggest it because it's a very powerful message in there. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, I watched it really briefly uh, yesterday, and uh, I really had the feels because before this episode, in yeah. my opinion, yes, I t- I thought Chris Canyon was like a forgettable character, mm-hmm. but then after watching the episode, oh man, I just realized how un- underappreciated he was. Even with the part about him being gay aside, like he had so much to contribute to the wrestling industry, oh, and yeah. I feel that he's one of those tragic stories like, in wrestling. Yeah, I'm glad that they told the story, and if anything, hopefully there is a lesson to be learned uh, from it, not just for like wrestlers, but for us all in general. Mm-hmm. You know, so we'll just leave yeah. it as that. Um, can I can I say it's yeah. very funny that this episode of Dark Side of the Ring make me relate more to Brian Cage than anything AEW <laughs> has ever shown. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. The fact that he was, because he's a student of Chris Canyon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He seemed way more likable than anything he's done uh, or, or they tried to portray him anyway uh, in AEW television. So um, that yeah. being said, thank you so much for joining us. We got to get out of here before, yeah. you know. Guys, please, please watch Broken Skull Sessions, another great episode. And I think next week once we are back, Hmm. We're going to be talking about the draft because yeah. the draft oh, is going to be happening. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk like about ha- half of the draft. Half of the draft. Half of the draft. <laughs> maybe we should do yeah. the. Actually, maybe next week's podcast we should do on Tuesday, huh? after both mm. parts of the draft are over. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. We'll, well, we'll, we'll do a poll. We'll yeah. do a poll. As always, stick to our social media so that uh, we'll update you. We can update you on everything um, Instagram, yeah. Kick to the Guard. <laughs> Uh, Facebook. If you haven't already, please drop us a like on this video. Do us a favor on the live stream. And if you missed any of it, you can always go back and watch it on demand or listen to the podcast while you're driving, while you're uh, getting your workout on at the gym. Kick to the gut mm-hmm. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you can get your podcasts. I kind of feel bad that mm-hmm. we have to kind of leave our listeners and the people in chat hanging. No worries. This was like a very, very short episode, but I hope I hope you guys stay for next week and we're going to be back. We're going to talk as long as you want. Bro, next get. next week is going to be all about the draft. I can't wait. And maybe we'll even talk about draft memories and stuff like that. But for right now, though, we are going to go get educated. You have a great Monday ahead. And for those of you who watch my Twitch stream, I'll see you tonight to play games. I, I'm, I'm freaking going all day, bro. All day from morning, morning show to night. Woo! Wow, no stopping. The hustle can is we real. Just say, can we just say that Mr. Young is extreme? Extreme! Until the top turnbuckle breaks and I fall on my crotch. Perfect way to end. <laughs> Tubbs, we're just wrapping up. Thanks for joining the chat. Okay, uh, we're going to get out of here. It's Mr. Young. And it's far in the building. You. Enjoy your week. <laughs>